That's uh, <laughs> Tim Cook gifted Donald Trump the first 2019 Mac Pro. Uh, we are now live on Twitch. <laughs> okay. That makes me sad. Yeah. That was worth something. And now it's worth nothing. Why is Twitch chat failing to load? Let me try this again. Maybe, possibly. Come on, Twitch. You can do it. I believe in you. There we go. Okay. Okay, we got Twitch going. Yep, we are now live. All right. So 259. I just got to get the titles. Okay. Okay. I have what you sent me here. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Yep. Let me find you. Okay. Oop, I got to turn this. No, I think I got to turn it more this way because I'm leaning. Get that lean. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> we're live. We're, we're live on everything. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here in the In30 Network. My name is Hi, I'm Tom is there. Hi. That way. And this is episode 259. It's we don't have a title for it yet, but basically we got a whole lot of questions about Signal and WhatsApp and Facebook and everything. So I, I think, and a lot of news did come out. So it's, I, I think it's important that we, we discuss it. I don't know how long it's going to take. This could be really quick, or we may have to split this up. But there's a lot of information and some best practices and things like that. So let's first start off with, we moved from WhatsApp to Signal. Mm -hmm. We did. We're keeping the WhatsApp group, I, I don't know, for posterity's sake, uh, you want to dank meme it. You want to throw some dank memes in there. That's okay. The new favorite meme right now is Bernie Sanders sitting in his inauguration chair. Uh, those are amazing as of this moment. Uh, but yes, we've we moved to Signal. So all the things that we were discussing about the issues with Signal seem to be fixed, question mark. So the original issues were it had a really terrible desktop app. It still has a very terrible desktop. It's not app, good. But it is much better. <laughs> it's like it actually signal to signal actually does work. Yeah. Signal a text message, uh, no, all bets are off. But signal to signal does actually work. Uh, the next thing was at were nicknames. So in WhatsApp, you throw people in. You're just not a phone number, and you're like, well, I don't care about that. Or you can put any name you want. Yeah, but when you want to address somebody, like you know, I don't, I, I don't know what all these numbers are. Too many numbers. So putting names. But the big one was everyone used to be an admin, and that means anybody can add, and that's not generally okay. Like if you're a family chat, but in our WhatsApp group, we don't know who's in there, and everyone's really good. We have a really gr good group of people, um, but. You know, I mean, you just never know. You just, oh, we're going to, somebody may add a friend who will add a friend who will add a friend. And then we are getting, uh, we're getting scams for Bitcoin and everything else. And we can't kick people out. So they added the admin and the sharing the link and we can revoke the link. So they did it. So with all that said, I think they did a really good job of, for what it is right now. WhatsApp is still better for the most part. Specifically, I really don't want to download a desktop app. But the way that Signal works, that's the way to do it. So, any you want to add to that? Uh, no, no. Everything you said is spot on. I really, really hope that uh, the desktop app gets better. Um, one thing, and I'm, we're we're still waiting for uh, technical details. I haven't seen any yet on why Signal uh, went down, but they went from. Uh, you know, a million downloads to 50 million downloads very, very, very quickly. And they had some pretty gnarly downtime. They're down for basically a whole day. I want to say about a 12 hour period is what I saw, maybe a little longer. Uh, but it, it took them a while to get back up on their feet. But hey, they are. And uh, scale is an interesting beast. I'm, I'm going to basically repeat what I put in the signal group chat earlier, which is, uh, you know, scale is the big differentiator. You can make something that works for, you know, a hundred people. That's great. But when you get to a thousand, when you get to 10,000 people, the, the stuff that worked in the programming that you built doesn't 
really work for the same class, right? It doesn't work at the same scale. Uh, and even when you reach a million users, going from a million to 50 million is another jump in scale. You have to constantly reinvent your stuff, you know, make it more efficient, figure out exactly how to distribute load and, and where, you know, certain systems are doing everything. You have to try to break that up into separation of concerns. And there's, there's an entire class of computer science just dealing with issues of scale um, and signal is you know running into those issues frankly it's a great problem to have uh, when you start running into scaling issues hey guess what uh, it means that you're getting more successful that the stuff that worked before with your small amount of users doesn't work now with your giant amount of users and congrats to signal you had scaling issues and uptime problems hats off to you guys um, sorry for the downtime but congrats you're making it Look, if you remember the Twitter fail whales, that was a royal pain um, because they had money. Now, Signal is they're saying, hey, we're bootstrapping ourselves. We're completely free because we don't want to take money and we rely on donations. So I I did I did send them I did send them twenty dollars and say, here you go. I mean, oh, twenty dollars not going to do much. But you know what? If a bunch of people send them twenty dollars. So one of my one of one of my friends, Drew Curtis, he runs the FARC.com website. Uh, we had him on back before we were talking security and he was explaining uh, scaling issues. And when you have no money and you have to scale, it becomes really hard because the, the technology gets better and you can't afford it. So there's a whole lot of problems there. And we have to remember the million people that were probably using signal were probably not sending pictures. They were not, they were not sending audio. They were just purely using it for the 100% bulletproof security application that was sending quick messages to each other. And yes, yeah, sometimes people did that. Then, then as the floodgates open, people were like testing everything out and sending big files is tough especially when you have to encrypt everything at all times, both ways, and you have to do the key exchanges and everything else. So, so they got it down. The problem was it was after the Capitol riots and it, and, and, and that was, it, it's, I mean, the president got inaugurated today and this is not political, but we, everyone was a little scared. If you were, if you're in America, everyone was a little on edge until noon today and signal going down. And you, I saw tweets, people, we were trying to, we, we, we were having a really important communication. Yeah, you were, but you guess what? It's a free service and they're scaling. This is a good thing. I don't, people said that it's Elon Musk saying, go to signal. I don't know if it was really Elon Musk, uh, so we can actually, uh, one thing that I saw was you can thank WhatsApp for this. And we are going to get into a, a little bit of WhatsApp changes, but when WhatsApp gave the ultimatum of, hey, we're going to share your data with Facebook or you could not use the service, um, overwhelmingly, apparently, a bunch of new Signal users came directly from India, uh, where uh, you know Indian citizens said, oh, okay, I can either share data with Facebook or I can leave. What's this signal thing? Um, and they got a bunch of people from India jumping on the service, which is also really cool. Well, the problem is, is that I got a whole bunch of people also. And, and I'm, look, I'm really happy if, look, I, I, I do like WhatsApp. I've always liked WhatsApp. Uh, from the beginning, I liked WhatsApp. The idea of not SMS, anything but SMS. You give me a service, I'll do it. And now that I'm on an iPhone, I'm an iMessage person. But anyway, if you're on WhatsApp, so the common medium was WhatsApp and it had everything. So I did like it. I got my family to it. To move them off now is going to be next to impossible. But people saw this and they're jumping on it. And the one thing I have to say about Signal is that due to the, and we're going to talk about this, due to the bulletproof security, there are a lot of quirks that if you're not if you're not thinking right, you can screw things up pretty bad. Like you're not going to lose everything. But for example, if you don't, if you don't transfer, so let's say you get a new phone and you don't download signal on that phone, it doesn't know that your other phone doesn't work. So people could be sending you messages and you would have no idea. You have to do, you have to reset and do some stuff. It's not hard. They made it a lot easier, but that's what you have to do for the security. And so I, I, I hesitate to tell people download signal and it just works. It doesn't just work. It, it 99% works, but that 1%, you have to think about what you're doing. Why is this happening? Why is that happening? 
Well, that's because of the security. And we've spoken about this on WhatsApp, how they decide to do different things. Um, they hide like, the, this person got the new phone number. That was the one thing. And uh, WhatsApp gives you the option of backing up your chats to either iCloud or Google Drive, um, where Signal just doesn't. Um, so your WhatsApp chats, like, yeah, they are end-to-end -end encrypted. And we, we are going to get into this too, because there was some confusion early on that was later clarified by Facebook. But um, they are end-to-end -end encrypted from person to person and even group chats. Uh, but when you take the plain text of those chats and back it up to Google Drive or to iCloud, it's now a plain text backup in a cloud provider service. So you know, Google or Apple can hand over your WhatsApp messages at that point. Uh, and keep in mind that it's not just your communiques, right? Like if you are in a group chat with a whole bunch of people, it only takes one of those people backing up that group chat to Google Drive or iCloud to compromise everyone's messages in that group. Signal doesn't give you that option, right? It says, yeah, there's, there's no backups here, right? Now, that's not to say that people can't compromise you on signal, right? Like somebody can take their phone and, and show it to like the nearest federal agent and start scrolling through all the chats, right? Like it doesn't protect against any of that. And also doesn't protect against somebody leaving their phone unlocked with something open on the screen. It doesn't protect against people, you know, screenshotting stuff surreptitiously and sending it around. Like there are plenty of ways to intentionally compromise that security, but the unintentional ways are intentionally limited on signal which means yes yeah, signal's going to be less convenient than whatsapp in several key ways backup being one of the big ones the other one there's two that i saw recently is first there's a gentleman's agreement with google that incognito keyboard does not record keystrokes so if you have gboard installed you're trusting google not to uh use that data and in the far in the far east apparently the I don't know what it's called for the Chinese characters. There's some there's opinion? some name for it. the pinion keyboard. Yeah, uh, there's no good the Google pinion keyboard is terrible. The Baidu one, however, is the one that everyone uses, and you have to jump through a little bit of hoops. But that you're sending the information directly to Baidu, and yes, no, or whatever. Signal doesn't like that. So oh, and recording. So on Gboard, you can talk to your phone. And I guess on iOS too, and Signal disables that, and you have to enable that because that's a that's a vector to send data. And like I said, ninety nine percent of the time it just works. It's that other one percent that will rack your brain. And we've discussed this. Uh, they make you give your phone number, which allegedly they're trying to move away from, but I don't think that's going to happen immediately maybe a year but if you're not okay giving your phone number out that that's another problem so signal does have its problems that whatsapp for instance had but whatsapp seemed to solve to solve for for the for the vast case so let's or i mean we're talking too much about the, the backstory so <clears throat> so facebook said we're going to share data Okay, what does sharing data mean? It means I already have a Facebook account, whereas you don't. And so, okay, they get that. Can they bust the end-to-end -end encrypted chats? They initially, this is where it got a little murky. And then, and then I'm going to put a Gizmodo article when, when I can find it that basically said, no, personal chats are still end-to-end -end encrypted. That is 100% true. And guess what? Facebook even said, uh, Facebook even came out and said, yes, these are, the, where, the, the way it works is that there's something called WhatsApp for business. We don't do it because we're Americans. We're, we're dumb Americans. We don't understand this. We still use SMS. But apparently in India and in Brazil, where WhatsApp is like 98%, there's shopping going on on WhatsApp. So you can buy stuff and you have business relationships. Well, they're harvesting that data. So if you're buying shoes or groceries, they're taking that and they're aggregating that into the Facebook detail. So that that's really granular. And they can see those chats because the business side of it is not encrypted. And so while I guess I'm okay with that because I don't use it, it's just, it's down this dark road where we started with, we're gonna, we're gonna get your metadata. Okay, fine. Oh, now we're going to match your profiles. 
okay. See, they're ripping off that band aid just a little bit and a little yep. bit and a little bit more. And now they're going to say, hey, uh, now if you're going to do business chats, that's not encrypted. Oh, well, that, that seems a little weird to me. So, yeah, they're, they're still encrypted. So, WhatsApp for Business has this option to use Facebook as kind of your API layer. So, if you're a business, like let's say you're a large business and you have a whole lot of customer service representatives, right? They can't all be huddled over one phone because that one phone has the WhatsApp keys to communicate with customers, right? So instead what they do is Facebook will hold the encryption keys and then federate out from there. So you've got like this one encrypted tunnel end to end. So Facebook becomes one of those ends and the other end is, you know, you talking to this business. And then all of your employees can now interact with the Facebook backend with the Facebook interface to talk to whatever customer is talking to them. But due to the way technology works, you can't, right? Sharing that key with everybody would make the key useless. So Facebook holds it and makes it easy for businesses to integrate their software through an API to Facebook. What that basically means to everybody at home listening that's not a computer science major or a programmer by trade uh, is that, yeah, Facebook will... Uh, if a business chooses to use it, Facebook will have access to read consumer to, or uh, customer to business chats. Now, personal chats, group chats that don't involve a business, no, those are staying end to end encrypted. Why this all kicked off is because WhatsApp actually changed their technical white paper and somebody ran it through a diff tool that shows differences between versions. And the, the line that said Facebook never gets a copy of your keys was removed that set off a whole lot of alarm bells including uh to myself uh and the our, our group chat where we said whoa this is super dangerous they removed this from their paper and now facebook can get your keys what's up with that um and then they did clarify no this is just for businesses everything on personal and group chats is staying the same but you're exactly right it's it's a really weird precedent it was it, it was one of those things that we've been it's 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 owned by facebook you saw people leave they threw up the signals brian acton and i forgot the other guy's name who started it they basically moved to open whisper systems which is signal they gave open whisper systems money they kept on saying delete your facebook account stop 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 and it's just the inertia because everyone you know is on whatsapp and it's like, eh, whatever. I'm, t I, I'm just saying, hey, where we're going on Friday night, or I'm posting stupid cat pictures. But it, it's, it's starting to get to be this, this final straw. And, and you saw that, that when, when that happened, as it spread around all the news, like you said, we had millions, tens of millions of new subscribers on Signal, mainly a lot from India and Brazil, saying, uh oh, something is going on. And, and now Facebook all of a sudden clarified it and said, oh, we're going to hold off for a couple months. And they took front page ads and I think all the Indian papers saying, no, no, we're, we're, this is for business. This is, we're still encrypted. We care about your privacy. They put out all these things. And it's, it's one of those, you can do whatever you want. We're not telling you which way to do it. Um, we are saying for as of right now, the, the chats are encrypted end to end. So you can send compromise i mean it's that base you can layer send that... ssh private keys through whatsapp to uh to personal people and in group chats but don't send it to businesses because that's not really end-to-end -end encrypted anymore what i was going to say is if you're going to send ssh private keys i would not do it through whatsapp but <laughs> if you're going to send if you're going to send uh, uh your so i would feel more comfortable with maybe your social security number or your netflix password credit. yeah like like stupid passwords around i would be i would be more okay with it because again it's good enough same with imessage it's good enough even though if you if you don't know imessage apple has the keys so as much as they say it's intent encrypted it is but apple controls the keys so if they get a letter from the government to say hey we need this they have to turn it over now they've been fighting it and so far they've been successful However, they do have the keys, and when push comes to shove, they will eventually have to do it. So again, uh, 
we then we start talking about who's your threat model who are you afraid of if you're afraid of the your neighbor they're not going they're not getting your whatsapp conversations they're not going to whatsapp they're not going to facebook and saying this if you're worried about a state level actor or whatever it is uh then you have different problems and then maybe the way to go is signal or or other end-to-end encrypted things but but and, you have to and- ask yourself that. Keep in mind, if if your threat model includes a state level actor, uh, maybe an iPhone with signal is not your best choice for communicating, right? Like if you're if you are worried uh, about the CIA, NSA, FBI, or other other government agency, U.S. or non-U.S. getting your messages, um, you've got way 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 bigger problems and maybe you shouldn't be carrying a smartphone in the first place like there's there is a whole host of problems that you have to worry about uh that we are not equipped on this show to handle or discuss i mean i will say the fbi is very busy right now with a whole bunch of parlor data um again if you don't know everyone the parlor data got hacked so all these people who were going to stop the, the steal and storm the capital and everything else they basically they they made it really easy they literally were on camera saying hey we're here like you can find me here here is the speaker's lecture i'm sitting here like this this was this was there was no opsec anywhere there but again it's and again you're you, you posted this on Parler and the website got hacked. So the FBI is a little busy right now with other things. But for but like we said, Signal is as good as security as you can get at this moment. If you're really worried about the U.S. coming after you, um, you're you're not you. Maybe you are using an iPhone, but everything else is turned off. I I, I don't know what else you would be using, but all your location services and everything are going to be off and everything else. So, yeah, it's, um, so, you know, should you continue using WhatsApp? I think our, our previous, uh, episode does cover that pretty well. You know, I don't think there's an immediate need to jump off it, but if you are concerned with Facebook and how they've uh, been operating and have historically operated by, you know, giving you privacy controls and then slowly eroding those away over time. Uh, WhatsApp looks like yet another page in the standard Facebook playbook, right? They didn't say, oh, we're backing out. We're not doing this. They said, oh, we're going to put a temporary hold on this real quick. Wait for the PR to blow over. Wait for people to get less mad at us. Then we're going to do it anyway, which is the typical Facebook way of operating. Um, so, you know, if you're fine with that, cool. Like if you've got a Facebook account, you're not really exposing yourself to any more risk than you would otherwise by using WhatsApp. Um, But if you, if you want a higher class of messenger, I can recommend signal Uh, and they can scale to their current level. Correct. Well, I mean, the other problem is we hear a lot of is what about telegram? What about this other service? And a lot of these other services. So first off, I just want to go on record. Telegram, as as much as they say they're encrypted, they are not encrypted. They are join the signal group. Awful. We can discuss this. So Telegram has two parts. They have the unencrypted part, which are the group chats and everything else. Then they have the encrypted part. The encrypted part, while not been broken yet, it's everyone can. All the cryptographers say it can be broken, whereas Signal they say it can't be broken. So that that's the one thing with uh, with Telegram. Uh, Facebook Messenger has a van has an encrypted mode. It is hard to use, but it is there, and it does use open whisper systems and Signal. But again, you're sharing your data. Um, the other one, Google the the Google service RCS. The, no, R, well, there's RCS, which they say is encrypted. I don't. It, we're we're still not sure what what encryption it uses. So if that's your choice, that's your choice. I'm not going there yet. No, Alo or whatever there are other million the chat app. That yeah. was using Oprah Whisper Systems, but that eventually I think shut down for RCS. And there's there's Matrix, um, the Matrix protocol, which is uh, a decentralized messenger service. If you've used like XMPP or Jabber back in the day, it's basically a next evolution. And like it's it's not related to those technologies, but it operates in the same way. 
Anybody can run their own servers. The servers can connect to each other. It's a big distributed mesh network chat system. Uh, from a technology perspective, it's really cool. My main issue with Matrix and its, its client, Riot, uh, one of the more popular clients for the Matrix protocol, um, is that the security wasn't baked in by default. They, they did, like a lot of projects do, they wanted to just get the thing working. We'll figure out the rest later. But the issue is with these messenger protocols, when you layer the security on top and you don't bake it in from the start, you leave a whole lot on the table and you leave yourself open to a whole lot of risk. And as we've seen with the Matrix protocol so far, their security has typically not been bulletproof. It's it's fine. Like you're not you're not signing yourself up to, for plain text shenanigans by using Matrix, but I, I wouldn't really consider it a contender in this way. Um, it's getting better. They've made a whole lot of strides to make it better, but I it's just not there yet. Um, and frankly, when it comes to distributed systems, I. Uh, Against my wishes for the world, I do side with Moxie, Marlin, and Spike in that distributed systems have a whole host of problems trying to stay updated because you can't evolve to the next level of the platform, right? Like if we wanted to turn on email encryption today for everybody, you can't really do that because the email systems all have to interoperate with each other. Matrix is going to be the same way. If you upgrade, everybody around you has to upgrade at the same time or else nobody gets upgraded. And what happens if you're on that one service that doesn't stay upgraded? You're now isolated from everybody and nobody wants that. So the issue is that you're all stuck 35 years out of date because nobody wants to take the first shot. Well, just I'll give you the best example. So I just typed in RCS and encryption and Google is using the signal protocol to encrypt their messages via RCS. But for RCS to work, all the cell phone carriers have to be RCS enabled. And Google is pushing that and they have most of the major carriers, but you always have that one friend who has that weird cell phone company that may or may not be supporting this. So again- Like Tom's it, Mobile. I was going to say uh, Republic Mobile, one of those that have free because they assume you're staying home all day, or Xfinity Mobile. I love that one oh. where they used – anyway, because you know they're, they're not going to do anything. But anyway, so again, like you said, bolting it on top is not the right way. Uh, van, uh, whatever, like I said, Facebook Messenger. I don't want to have to go to encrypted mode. I, I just want it to work. And there's others. I, I'm I'm a fan of Threema, but they just went open source and it doesn't look like the funding is there and it's paid. There's Wire. There's a whole bunch. And the key there is who's looking at it, who's providing the, the recommendations for it. But so far, you've had everyone say Signal works. And for the most part, it works. And I, I love the reviews. It looks so ugly. It looks this. It looks that. It doesn't let you do... I can't send money. And then somebody replies... This is a secure chat app. You don't use that for secure chat apps. So again, it's a secure chat app. The point of it is security. Every feature is based on security. So if you're trying to do something that's not secure, it's probably not going to have it and you should look for an alternative form. Um, uh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of people recommending like uh, tiny boutique open source messengers like oh well what about this thing and then this guy made it and it uses like some of signals protocol but then they mixed in their other stuff and these other quality of life features like okay cool and i'm, I'm glad people are experimenting with these projects but keep in mind that there's an issue with technology and you know smaller projects like this and where uh, from a security perspective, if you don't have a lot of a lot of people working on it, if you don't have the right people working on it, if you don't have experts looking at it constantly, there can be holes that you don't realize are there. Um, I love open source. I work in open source, right? I I contribute uh, as much as I can to open source, um, whether through you know patches or code or infrastructure or just plain old money and donations, um, but you do need critical mass to really, you know, hammer on something to make sure that it's bulletproof. And a lot of these smaller messengers just don't have the infrastructure or the people looking at it who need to be looking at it. And I'm not going to hitch my wagon to something unproven, right? Like, you can buy a car from a major manufacturer or you can buy it from Doug down the street. 
but does Doug down the street have all the safety ratings, right? Has it been battle tested? Has it driven millions of miles on the highway, right? It might be the best car in the world, but until that is proven out, I'm not getting behind that wheel. I mean, we'll give you that example. American cars are, most cars bought in the, purchased in the last five years will go 100,000 miles, American or not. And you're going to say, how is that possible? It's it's possible because reliability has gone way up over the years. But again, you're going back to your norms that that the Japanese comp, uh, cars were Honda and Toyota were really good for so long that that's the one you want to buy. And that's not necessarily true anymore. So again, you have to look and you have to do your research. And we're telling you, we've done the research and, and go, you can go signal – Everyone, a lot of people have done the research. They put it right on their site on how to do it. It's open source. You can look at it yourself if you want and everything else. Anyway, we're we're running out of time. I mean, we're I not have, over time, but. I have one okay. hidden topic I didn't tell anybody about because I literally just thought about it because I'm wearing yeah. the thing. Um, if you haven't, if you care about security, um, about privacy and your freedoms online, uh, you should head over and donate to the EFF. Um, now I donated and I got, got this really, really nifty hoodie. I like this thing. I've been wearing this all week. Uh, so just, just letting you know, this is free advertising. Um, you know, the EFF they're, they're rad. This thing is real nice. So, uh, Absolutely. If you want a hoodie, it's, it's kind of a, a larger donation. I want to say that the floor for getting the hoodie is like 200 bucks, but Hey, uh, the EFF brought back YouTube DL and that is worth uh, way more money than I paid for the hoodie. So, uh, yeah, jump on, uh, donate. You don't even have to get a gift if you don't want anything, but I will say the laptop stickers they give you are fantastic. So, uh, so check those out and, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. EFF. The EFF is absolutely good and like i said if uh wikipedia and then the other one is signal that they need some money to scale a little bit more and to keep them going so with that said we're at 30 minutes so we'll see everyone next week and i remind you join the signal group if you want in find us at in 30 on twitter uh in 30.net message us we'll get you right in and with that said let's say goodbye and we'll see everyone hopefully next week bye everyone bye let me see if this worked. Okay, let me turn down Twitch.